Welcome to the Soul Train Express, where we inspire, encourage, and rebuild. So jump on board and enjoy the journey. If our channel brings you value, please share and subscribe so others can be encouraged too. So today I want to focus on the deceiver. Don't you hate it when you find out you were manipulated, rejected, kicked to the curb, or when you are having a great day and someone says something that ruins your whole mood? or when someone you trusted has been lying to you the whole time. I am sure everybody's hands are raised right now. Well, Satan is like that friend that manipulates you into doing something you think is a great idea, but come to find out he was lying the whole time. Everything goes wrong. He kicks you to the curb and steals your joy. Now, ain't nobody got time for that. Yet, we allow it. We allow the negative thoughts. We allow us to be sabotaged. We walk in fear and we are constantly losing our joy. Well, let's find a strategy because I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of the enemy playing games with me. There are three predictable ways that Satan comes to devour you. Today, let's focus on one. The first statement is, I feel empty. Satan wants us to crave. He brings an idea that leads us to feeling discontent. Don't you ever feel like you don't have a purpose? Or don't you ever feel like you don't have joy? Or you're having this giving up mentality and you're just not sure why? Satan wants you to crave. He does that by starving you. It's like the feeling when you get when you are so hungry that you will literally eat anything. You start craving for things that you normally don't eat. I know when I'm hangry, I don't care what it is, how much it costs, just give me the food. Satan's strategy is similar. He wants to manipulate you by infiltrating a toxic negative thought life that will result in this craving mentality. His goal is to keep you empty so that you can crave things that you normally don't do. We try to fill the void with things that bring pleasure, but not true intimacy, that bring happiness, but not everlasting joy. That brings entertainment and fun, but it will eventually end and that emptiness will still be there. We need to replace the statement of, I feel empty to I feel full. Deuteronomy 8.3 says that a man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Jesus provides a way out of the craving mentality to a fulfilled life. And since Satan uses our thought life to sabotage ourselves, we have to counteract it with truth. This is why truth is so important, y'all. If we do not know the truth, how on earth can we be set free? In order to get to the truth, we have to evaluate what we believe. Our beliefs are not always true. They can be based on previous experiences, whether good or bad. Beliefs can be our perception of life, but not reality. Beliefs can be developed by a repetitive pattern of thinking where our expectations transform to opinions and then our opinions turn into beliefs and our beliefs turn into truth. We're gonna have to have a whole episode on beliefs, but let's just start thinking about it. Why do we believe what we believe? And is it true? On the Soul Train Express podcast, my first episode of True Talk Tuesday, we define truth. Truth has to be consistent, coherent, it has to correspond to reality and it has to be livable. Is what you believe truth? And what does the Bible have to say about your belief? Does your belief align with God's word? Sometimes I hear people say, well, you know what? I'm gonna make a decision um, based off what the Holy Spirit says to me. I'm just gonna pray and you know, he's gonna guide me. And that is true, Holy Spirit will guide you, but his guidance will not contradict what the word of God says. So when the moments of emptiness enter in, if your beliefs align with God's word, you can fill yourself up with the truth of who Jesus is and what he says you are. And you can fight back when you begin to crave the things of this world. Let me leave you with a train of thought. I am absolutely convinced 
that meaningless does not come from being weary of pain. Meaningless comes from being weary of pleasure. And that is why we find ourselves emptied of meaning with our pantries still full. Ravi Zacharias.